Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be kind of a weird one. Um, I have uh, a myriad of different devices in my collection. Um, I use some of them some of the time, some are just for the reviews, and others that I use all of the time. Um, I meant to do this video almost a year ago. I've had, <laughs> I've had the drawing portion done. I mean, I, I've just been inundated so much with so many different projects, right? Sometimes things fall through the cracks, but I didn't want this one to go by the wayside because it's an important device in my collection because I use it every single day. And now that I've I've got a year, almost a year behind me using the device, um, it gives me a unique perspective uh, in this particular video to kind of show you the beginning of the cycle of using the device uh, all the way through my first impressions. And then in the end, I'll do a wrap up as far as my end impressions. So the device I'm talking about is a Samsung device. A lot of you have asked if I review Samsung devices, and I do. I've had one Samsung um, laptop, which was the Galaxy Book 2 360. I thought that device was absolutely wonderful, spectacular. I kind of ran into the issue where I had other devices that I was using, and at that particular size and price point, I ended up getting rid of it. I kind of regret that because it was so wonderful. Just a wonderful device. And I didn't really have too many opportunities to review Samsung tablets because honestly, if I have to buy them, right, it kind of puts a cramp in, in my overall, um, you know, in my overall uh, review process because I want the device to do well, you know, since I'm basically going to be keeping it because the channel's not big enough right now for me to just go out and spend $1,500 on a device every three months to do a review. So this particular one, I heard so many good things about it, even at the $349 price point, which is iPad uh, territory. I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and swing and see where we land. Now, I didn't pay $349 dollars for it. I was able to get this much cheaper than retail. Um, even brand new, I was able to get it much cheaper than retail. Uh, and the um, device I'm talking about is the Samsung Galaxy S6 Lite. This is a 10.4 inch Android based tablet that has S Pen technology. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to give a first swing, meaning I'm going to give my first interpretations of it. We're going to do a short unboxing and we're going to review the tablet as I would any other tablet. And at the end, since I will have a full year of using the device behind me, I'll give my final viewpoint of exactly why I think this is a game, I don't want to say game changer, but it is something that those of us who are looking for that one product, right, that one product that has incredible battery life, great media presentation, good speakers, Great Wi-Fi, good storage, expandability, great screen, but most of all, this is this is the caveat. This is this is kind of what I'm always looking for in a tablet: incredible drawing experience. And I think that this might be the best. And I'm talking in comparison to like your iPad, even your new M4 iPad. Right? M4 iPad came out; they kind of skipped over the M3. I have the M2 pro version of the iPad, and I love it. Um, but there's always that little hang-up as it pertains to the uh, Macintosh Apple operating system on iPad. So let's go ahead, let's dive in deep with regards to the Galaxy S6 Lite made by Samsung. And I've, I've got some comments uh, in the end um, with regards to Android because, you know, I haven't had a ton of experience on Android. But over the past year, you know, I've had the opportunity to kind of get my feet wet. And let me tell you something, you're going to be surprised at my reaction. So let's go ahead and get started with the unboxing. And we're going to draw some and maybe do some time lapse here and there. So enjoy. So here's their lovely website. I don't know if you can see this. You can. So here we are. Let me see here go here. Let's go computing. Let's go tablets. Okay, so I want you to look. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven on their front page tablets. This is a very fast way to confuse your, your customer base, 
when you have this many, oh, see, here's the Galaxy Tab A7 Lite. So here's the A7 Lite, and it's 199 the S6 Lite, so A7 is probably non-pad pin compatible. Then you have the S6 Lite, S, maybe S stands for S Pen. Galaxy Tab A8, 149, S6 Lite, which is the one we'll be reviewing today, which is 349 for the 64 gig model, and then 429 for the 128. And then you go up the S8, the S7, S7 is 419. S8 is 699, and then we start really exploding in terms of dollars here. So we have the S8 Ultra, which is kind of their premier tablet, and that one is uh, 1099. The S7 FE Plus, which retails for 599, on sale now for 529, so on and so forth. So there are so many different. Here's the S9 Ultra for 1200. I mean, yeah, there's there's quite a bit of options for you, right? They kind of slide things in. But a 349, that's what this one is. Box is very nice, seems very utilitarian, but I always like um, I always like whenever they put the device or artwork on the front. And there's some like foil right here, that's really nice. So let's go ahead and put this to the side. Here is, I believe, a static free covering. Let's go ahead and pry this out. Okay, side, oh, here we go. This is a little um, remover for the side door for the SD card. Let's go ahead and open this up here. So you have your documentation, which shows the different areas. You have your camera, camera on the front, camera on the back, side key to turn it on, the volume rocker, the S Pen, the S Pen button. So it has a single button. Typically with Samsung, that particular button is not program programmable, which I think is kind of crummy because you know I'd like to be able to use it. The default, I believe in some programs for that secondary S Pen button will be the eraser. Charge port being a USB-C, which I love. Because I honestly I don't need any more cables, Samsung account. So whenever you go in, you're going to have to sign up if you want to validate your warranty. And then uh, what's really nice is just similar to other uh, Android or Samsung devices that run Android, you will be able to um, do something called Samsung Smart Switch if you have other tablets that you want to. Kind of transfer the data, so on and so forth. Essential apps, Google Duo, Google Photos, Google Drive. These are included whenever you get your Samsung device. And what's interesting with Samsung, too, is, you know, not only do you get Google because of Android, but you also get Samsung. So you're going to kind of double up, you know, your video editing software, your Samsung, your Samsung um, storage, your Samsung, you know, photo manipulation, you said all these things that really cater to the Samsung user, you're going to be able to do that. Um, terms and conditions, we're not going to get into that. And, phew, oh, that's a terrible sound. S Pen, here's the mighty S Pen. So, uh, one of the things that the user did say was he used it very sparingly, and he actually had to replace the S Pen nib because it wore out like in three weeks, he said. So I'm not sure how, what he was doing with it, you know, but at the end of the day, I hear that the S Pen tips last quite a long time. But just so you know, this is not the original S Pen nib that came with the device. Overall, nice, it's got good weight to it. It never feels cheap, Samsung stuff never feels cheap. Um, what else do we have in here? Oh, let's feel the cable and the brick. Oh, okay, so brick and cable. So those are very essential when operating the device. Let's go ahead and do the S pin over here. And what's really cool is they sent along a case. This is pretty cool, right? This does not come with your purchase. You have to purchase this on the side. This is made by, I can't even read that, Z Zotrope? Zotropa? Z T O T O P Zatota, whatever. And what's nice is it has a little place so you can put your S Pen. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and click that in there, and we'll unwrap the star of the show. 
first of all, it weighs about a pound. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Sound by AKG. Oh, fingerprints. There's so many. I literally just took out. There's tons of fingerprints on it. Ugh. It's not too thick, but it is sturdy. It's an aluminum back. I don't know what this is. What is that? I didn't think that it had its cellular. Typically, whenever you see stuff like this, this is a cellular antenna. I don't think that is. Camera's nice. I don't I put my fingers on it. I usually like to do the fingerprint test on the lens. Eh, no real fingerprints. I love whenever they emboss or deboss or tampo print their branding, which is really nice. And it looks like there is a... I don't know if that comes with it. It almost looks like there's... a glass protector on here. Probably has to do with blue light. Anyway, so let's go ahead and power it on. Now, comparatively speaking, here is the S6, Tab S6 Lite, and here is the XP Pen unit that I just reviewed. So you're gonna obviously see this is 12.4, this is 10.4. So size-wise, it's a little bit smaller but it is cheaper. <laughs> um, and comparatively speaking too, whenever I compare it with other tablets, four gigabytes of RAM is okay for media consumption, but the second you start doing anything heavy, you're gonna start running into some lag. So that being said, hopefully we don't have any issues. Here's the SD card slot right here. You pop and put in your SD card, and then suddenly you have a tablet with a terabyte of storage, which is nice. So let's go ahead and get it up on the stand and get started. And here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and draw today without a glove. And the reason I do that is because I want to see how good or bad the palm rejection is. It's not typically an issue whenever it comes to, you know, higher end or mid range tablets. Um, but I typically draw with a glove just because I don't want a bunch of oil and stuff on the screen. But we're going to do that today without and see how it rolls. Some apps you can actually uh, just have paint paint only. And we might go ahead and implement that just in case. Okay, so I've already installed some applications. I've got Clip Studio Paint, I've got Sketchbook Pro, I've got Infinite Painter, which is kind of like a Procreate clone. And then you have something called High Paint. Where is High Paint? Because I got that as well. High Paint, which is also a <laughs> Procreate clone on the Android store. Krita and Lightroom for Samsung. What else do I have on here? Blah, blah, blah. Spotify, OneNote, stuff like that that I use constantly. Here's those Google apps that I was talking about that are installed. And then you have, of course, the Samsung apps that are installed as well. Um, yeah, Pinup, it's got a program called Pinup that I've never used. Uh, you can go here on the Play Store. You can go on to the um, Android uh, Samsung store as well. So, uh, close app, the Galaxy store. So you've got a myriad of selections that you can go in and get, uh, you know, get applications from. Um, overall, feel it's a I don't want to say laggy but I've got other tablets that really it feels really snappy you're not seeing any discernible lag but on the other hand like whenever I'm opening stuff like there's like a minuscule slight delay that's what I noticed immediately as compared to some of my other tablets like my iPads and the uh, XP pen device so let's go ahead we're gonna go into sketchbook pro I've already pre-done a file it's screen size and it is 300 dpi so first thing i like to do is i like to just feel the pressure curve it is very very good i mean we're talking the most minuscule just oh and i like using a textured brush because typically textured brushes will tax the processor a little bit more Good smoothing going in and out, and I've got this particular in my preferences. If you go to preferences, oh, I'm sorry. If you go to pin mode, I have pin mode off, and I've got multi gestures, touch gestures uh, on. So even though you know it won't draw with just my finger, 
So that's really good. So we're not gonna have to deal with that. So let's go ahead and get rid of the menus. And what I like to do is first, now with this particular pen, just because I've already gone in and uh, kind of done a couple things and felt things out. I don't like to go super cold because it wastes a lot of tape and time. So what I noticed is with the S Pen, to get a really good line, whoops, I'm sorry. Here, all the way down. To get a really good line, what I like, what I need to do is have the pen more upright at a nine degree uh, angle because the second I go over to the side, it goes into tilt mode. Now, I love tilt mode because you can shade really nice. And this is something to note too, because this device, as well as other Samsung S Pen enabled devices, do have tilt. The XP Pen unit does not have tilt currently. Even though it has their latest and greatest technology, it does not have tilt. The iPad has tilt. So that's two things that are two two competitors um, uh, while well, the the XP pen does not have tilt but the iPad does so that's something to note if you need tilt which I love having tilt because I can shade stuff and that to call yourself a professional device or even a device that supports pen technology you need to have tilt right that's important to the users so that's my little speech on tilt um, so far, the, the pressure curve is really, really good. I would probably equate it to maybe the um, the Wacom Bamboo Pro or one of the, maybe the Wacom One technology. That is just so, both of those are so good uh, at their pen technology. No latency, no, no discernible uh, parallax. The drawing experience is absolutely instant and it is so Oh my gosh, it is so good. I mean, I can't even, this is, it reminds me a lot of me drawing on uh, desktop devices. So one of the things that, that you need to note too is whenever you're drawing on a tablet this size, the pen, if you're used to a very hefty pen or a larger pen on a desktop, this one just, it feels small. And I find myself constantly when I'm drawing, I'm hitting this right here, which is their pen uh, button. So if I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, and I accidentally hit it. See, in this program, it's not programmed. Thing. If I was in Clip Studio Paint, then that particular button is programmed to erase. So I would actually erase my drawing, which I'm like, man, why am I doing that? See, you can see whenever I'm drawing, if, if I go into a natural drawing angle and don't do like a tilt, like tilt to me is like all the way down, right? It's got, you know, more than 45 degrees. But whenever I'm drawing like this, the tilt still comes on. So I would like to, so now I have to draw like this, right? Or upright like this, which I don't like. I don't like drawing like that. My natural drawing position is just like this. And you can see that it has, it has a degree of tilt on. So that's just something you're gonna have to think about. I don't know if you can adjust it in here, so if we go to preferences, brush panel, canvas, high precision strokes, let's turn that on just because. Yeah, see, you can see like I'll draw, there is no latency, but you see that, that minuscule little hesitation. It literally is like probably 0 0.02 microns of time but it is definitely, you can definitely feel it. And whenever I'm working fast, right? <clears throat> and then I'm like, oh, see, it didn't happen then. <laughs> I think too, whenever I have stuff happening in the background, maybe um, it's downloading or updating uh, an application or it's uh, doing something in the cloud, that's gonna steal system resources. And that is when that four gigabytes of RAM comes into play. You need eight gigabytes of RAM, in my opinion, if you're gonna be doing any kind of artistic endeavors on a device like this. Rapid UI, got it. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is just showing you the uh, quickness of the pen. Um, I'm not drawing anything in particular. We're gonna to get to that here in a minute because I always like to do a drawing demo and show you guys the real world application of what the device can do. What I do like is how accurate it is. 
right? It is very accurate whenever drawing. See, one finger doesn't work, but this is just in Sketchbook Pro, and I am drawing a little bit small, so let's draw a little bit bigger. Let's go, here's the puck. Uh, I'm gonna do that. Let's go we'll make the brush a little bit bigger. Let's make the brush really big. See, whenever you have big brushes like this, typically you'll see a lag and there is no lag with this. So that's really good. That octacore processor really has the ability to facilitate quick drawing. Okay, line test. So this is something that I do just to appease people because a lot of people need that line test to tell them and show them that this is a decent machine. It doesn't have a lot of wiggle. Okay, so I don't know why it does that. Let's do vertical. Whoops. The wrong. Oh, here we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and do vertical. Let's go in. Now, what I'm looking for is something that would do something like this. And you would have hills and valleys. There is none of that. So this is a very, very, very good drawing experience. Oh, so good. So then we're gonna go horizontal. Whoops. Pretty much perfect. Anything that you see is probably gonna be attributed to human, human condition, human error, human whatever. So if we take a little piece of paper and we draw a straight line, oh, see it. Let's try this. Oh, it's not going to register because eh, the ruler. Oh, here we go. Last time I tried to draw with a metal ruler on a screen like this, it was like, no, you can't. So let's go ahead. <laughs> Did you see that? That's hilarious. It's like, uh, -uh we are definitely not doing that. And then it doesn't want to turn on. What the heck? Fascinating. So let's go ahead and we'll just do a horizontal, right? Now if I, now you do see some, you see that? Right there, we're gonna zoom in a little bit. Ooh, look at that, that's parallax. For those of you who don't know what parallax is, there it is, right there. And I'm drawing really slow. Now if I were to go fast, right? And you can see a huge, that's like a quarter of an inch parallax, what? There is quite a bit of parallax. <laughs> I lived with parallax with other devices for many years and I was still able to get some stuff done. Um, just know that parallax is something that happens in devices and uh, you know, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and turn the line smoother on. Let's see what we get with the line smoother. <laughs> you can see it. Let's go ahead and turn it up. So here. It just smooths out that line. <laughs> you see that? That's what a line smoother does. I don't typically like line smoothers because it kind of separates me from the feel of the device itself. Um, what do I think? I think it's probably middle of the road. Here's, here's like the best no parallax up here. Here's the worst that, that, you know, there's so much parallax you can't even use the device. Probably, this one's probably in the middle. You know, you can see it. I mean, it's very prevalent. But whenever I'm drawing fast, it doesn't seem to happen. It's like, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, whenever I'm doing like this, you can see it. Yeah, let's go fast. Let's go really slow. So it's not bad. Maybe it's user error. User error, you moron. Okay, so we're going to do a really quick drawing because I love to draw. Drawing's my jam. Let's go ahead. Delete. Sorry about the sniffling. Ugh, I gotta get. I gotta do something about that. I'll be editing those out. <laughs> okay. So, um, drawing. Now, this is obviously a drawing channel, but for the sake of time, we are not going to get in too deep with this particular device. We're just going to show you a real-world application of how I'm going to use this device. You know, I'll use it to do some sketching, to do some drawing, right? Maybe a travel companion. Maybe going to a coffee shop. You know, you know what's funny is I say that, and then 
it's a $350 device, right? Why do I need a $350 device to go drawing? I don't. I want to get that clear. You don't need a expensive device. Just get a sketchbook for crying out loud. They're like less than $20. Get some decent pencils, right? You don't need this. But if you're one of those people that's like, I need the latest and greatest and best, then this is, you know, probably going to be your jam. I think that overall, I don't know what's going on. What is going on? It keeps switching. I wonder, I wonder if it's messing up palm rejection. Let's go ahead and make that brush a little bit bigger. Okay. All right. You guys know that this, this particular channel was founded on drawing and that's where I initially started. I didn't do any kind of product reviews. And then, you know, I, I don't remember what my first product review was, but I just enjoy doing product reviews. One of the other things I don't like about this program in particular is I'll be drawing, 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 and I'll move with two fingers as a gesture, and then it reads the delay and the two finger gesture as an undo. So I'll go back and I'll have to redo some of the, um, or I'll put my hand down. And I don't know if it's me as a user putting my hand down incorrectly. It'll get rid of my last stroke. And that is just so irritating. Oh, I'm like, oh, first world problems, right? So overall, I like the feel of it. In terms of real estate, I like drawing on something a little bit bigger, such as an iPad or uh, the XP pin unit. But overall, I do like it. Oh, yeah. See, now you saw that. So what I have it set up as currently is if I hold, actually, it's not even there. No, I don't. So let's go here. Let's go to preferences. This is something, gestures, hold for color picker. Hold for color picker is on. Hmm. Fascinating. I'm starting to see some of the things that I don't like. Okay, so let's give him some hair yeah in terms of quality I mean Samsung makes a fantastic product you you cannot deny that that is not something that you can argue right Samsung makes garbage no they make really good devices their products are good their TVs are good their phones are phenomenal I mean they know what they're doing right Year here. Da, 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 da. It just feels good, right? Whenever I'm drawing. That pen nib, even though I think from the factory, Samsung has a little bit of a rubber and it's softer. Now this has a slick surface, and that's something that you know you're gonna have to discern whether or not. Yeah, that's weird. It keeps bringing up the color picker. I'm not really sure why. Why does it keep bringing up the color picker? Huh. So we're going to go ahead and go back. We're going to go to preferences. We're going to go tap hold for color picker off. Done. Okay. So we're going to see if that solves the issue because it keeps going to the color picker and I don't want it to go to the color picker. Okay. So let's go ahead. There's his chin. Obviously, I'm just doodling, right? Now, like I said before, the tilt of the pen, it's got like an overactive tilt. And I wish I could adjust that because I feel like from the factory, I, I, don't, I don't draw like this, right? Nobody draws, or at least I don't. I don't draw like this. See, it just got rid of my uh, stroke. So we go back. Yeah. So I think a lot of times things that we do and we blame it on on device may have to do with us and less with the device. Now I love whenever I'm drawing like this and I can shade, but the angle is just, the tilt angle is just too sensitive. It needs to be brought back a little bit because whenever I do, do shading, I actually go down like this, but it's doing it, it's doing it right there. Now if I do go way down, look how big. 
Yeah. Now, if you do, now one of the things in this particular program, like I'm, now you cannot adjust pressure curve on the Samsung device. You just can't. And I think that sucks. Now I can go in on individual brushes on this particular program. And if I go to advanced and I go to pressure, opacity with heavy pressure, opacity with light pressure. So let's go ahead and choke that back a little bit. So let's go ahead and see if that helps. Yeah, so I can adjust the pressure curve inside of each individual program, but I can't do it overall in the application uh, of the computer. And that's something I noticed whenever I had my laptop. And I, that might have been the reason why I got rid of it, because I couldn't adjust the pressure curve in the overall machine. And that, that was kind of crummy. See, like right now, I have to go in and I have to kind of position it almost at a 45 or a 90 degree angle. Yeah, because if I don't, I can't get a crisp, get a decent crisp line. Now, from the factory, these, <clears throat> excuse me, these machines are calibrated in a certain way to kind of be the mid-range average. And, you know, whenever you get the pro programs, then you're going to have to, you know, adjust things as needed. And I tell you, I tell people that all the time. I'm like, yeah, it's a good device, but you're going to have to get it and you're going to have to adjust things to your, uh, you know, to your preference, right? It's no different than, you know, if you get the iPad. Now the iPad is so funny because you can't pretty much do anything on the iPad, right? It's pretty much only in the programs. Apple is very, very tight. Yeah, see, I put my hand down. Oh, it's doing it again. So I put my hand down. So the palm rejection, even though I'm not doing this, it's literally, it's registering whenever I put my entire hand down, it's registering as a two touch, which I don't like. And that is no bueno. So let's go ahead and down here. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger. I had somebody ask me because I was reviewing another product recently and they said, can you connect a quick key remote to that? And no, you can't. So this is, you know, people want the tablets to be everything for them. They want them to be their word processor. They don't want them to be, sorry about the sniffling. They want them to be a media consumption device. They want them to be a drawing device. They want them to be all those things and they just can't, right? Or they don't want you to because they want you to buy other crap that they sell. Here we go. The pressure curve is wonderful. It is really good, and, and I understand, you know, from their perspective, you start messing with the pressure curve of the overall machine, you know, and maybe it can't do it. I don't know, but they tout these machines as being kind of the, the wave of the future. Nobody's going to have a desktop. Everybody will have a phone in their pocket, and they'll just hook up tablets to their phones, which, you know, nowadays you can. You can hook up a phone, you know, to a tablet, and you can do a lot with it. I, I don't personally want that but at the end of the day people do it okay so here we go sketchbook pro great program for sketching for having fun it is a great program overall um it's just yeah <laughs> the desktop version is really really good and you know running on this particular device i think it is really good as well i i go to sketchbook pro a lot just to sketch and draw it's got a lot of really great features and you know you can install brushes that's another thing so i had somebody ask me recently uh, as it pertains to this particular program how you install brushes it's pretty simple we're going to do this really quick because you know it's my channel and i'll do what i want um so here is the primary pencil right you can see that I've already downloaded some of these uh, brushes that I have in my archive. And also they have stuff for free. So if you go here and you download free extras, it's going to take you to their website. So we're going to do that. Here we go. If we click brushes, whoops, oh, we're going to go brushes. You can download brushes for free. Yay. So let's say the new basics. So charcoal, color pencils, creamy pastels, oils. Um... I think I've already downloaded stuff. Yeah, you can see I've already downloaded stuff. So let's go back. Okay. We're going to import.
you can see some of the brushes that I've downloaded, right? Textured watercolor brushes, orange stripe, so on and so forth. And basically that's what you do. You would click on this and it would import that particular file into your brush library. Whoops. Okay, and we go back to Sketchbook Pro. And then they would appear right here in your library. And that's pretty cool because, you know, if you don't like the existing brushes that they have, you can import them. And I had, I had a little bit of a difficulty um, figuring out how to do that in the beginning because, again, you know, I come from a desktop environment and this is, of course, Android. So they don't want you to install a bunch of stuff that's going to hurt you. And yeah, so you can definitely install brushes if you like. Again, just having some fun. I mean, golly, that's that's all what it's all about, right? So again, that tilt is a little bit... Now that might be just because of the brush I'm, or the pencil I'm using. No, well, let's go here. The brush that I used to use, where is it at? Uh, is it that one? No, definitely not that one. Ooh, I do like that one, though. So it's nice about this. I'm going to show you how to do this real quick, too. So here, and you go here, opacity with light pressure. See how that suddenly becomes a brush with a stroke, flow with light pressure, so on and so forth. And then we come here, and then now, it's you can do some really cool shading with it. Yeah. Anyway, so that is that. Let's go back here. We're still drawing. Overall, the feeling, I would probably give it a 8 out of 10 um, in terms of feel. I just like drawing. Now, it's very slick, and that's one of the things that you can apply. Probably a paper-like screen uh, covering, screen protector, however you want to say it. You know, let's go ahead and do this. Have that mouth come here. Let's get a couple teeth coming out. Around here. Alrighty. Yeah. Overall, it's good. I like I said, if they could just dial that, ugh, dial that tilt in a little bit better, it would be phenomenal. Now, what's nice is you can go really far in there. I even get some amazing detail with this thing. Now, you're asking, does it run Photoshop? Well, I don't know, because unfortunately, the uh, this is, you know, Android. <laughs> and I don't know if full Photoshop would run on this. Full Clip Studio Paint does run on it. And you're like, well, show me, bro. Show me Clip Studio Paint, man. Quit yelling at me. I'm trying to do stuff. Okay, so here, let's give him a little beard here. Here. I'm trying to get stuff done in a way that makes sense to you guys. Okay, here's that. Oh, kind of a fan ass, kind of like a deranged fisherman, right? Okay, so um, this is another thing that I had difficulty with <laughs> when I first started doing this. I'm like, how do I save a PSD file from Sketchbook Pro on Android? And man, I'm going to tell you something. It took me a hot minute. It took me a hot minute. And of course, you're like, why don't you just look on the internet? Because I'm stubborn. Just like you. Stubborn. Nobody tells me what to do. Gee, I'll figure it out on my own. Yeah, that didn't, whoops, that didn't go so well. So let's go ahead. Save. Save. Save currents. Okay, so then we're going to go to um, the gallery, and we're going to go to this little button down here, export PSD. <laughs> That's novel. So we're going to go to save to device, and it's going to ask me where. I don't want it in the downloads, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to Michael's S tab S6 Lite. And we're just going to keep it untitled. And we're just going to go hit save because it'll go right into there. Okay. So we're going to go here. We're going to get rid of this. Boom. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Clip Studio. Yay, Clip Studio Paint. We love you. 
All right, Clip Studio Paint, what a wonderful program. This is a, a subscription-based program. It's about $15 a month, which affords you, I think, five devices you can put it on. So I just write it off on my taxes. So we're gonna go open. Okay, which is no bueno. Okay. Okay, import. Now it's gonna go here. There it is, right there. Ha ha! Okay, and that's what you do. Open. Okay. For some reason, it always imports without a background. I think that's kind of weird, right? Don't you think that's weird? Okay, and we're gonna go to, we're gonna drag you here. We're gonna double click, white. Okay. And we're going to go here and fill. Go back to layers. We're going to lock that layer and then we're going to come back to this guy. Okay, so here we are. Whoops. What are you doing, man? You're messing up the... Messing things up. Now you can also import uh, brushes into Clip Studio Paint. It's a little bit more involved where you have to go into split screen. So if I were to go here into split screen and then I were to go over here to files, I believe. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, F, G, H, I, A, F, files. Where are the files at? You're like, right there, you passed them. Yes, I am blind. I can't see them. Where are they? A, B, C, D. Huh. That's fascinating. Oh, these are applications. Ha ha, see? Sometimes it pays to look around. Files, files, files. Ha ha. Okay, so then we go to internal storage. Here's my internal storage, not inserted. These downloads. See, here are all the texture presses, mega classics. These are all Sketchbook Pro. Files. So then you can see that I'm a little bit of a novice whenever it comes to the Android operating system. Anyway, so what you would do basically, and let's say this was a Clip Studio paintbrush. Um, I would come here to the brush criteria over here. And it says add subtool. Basically what you do is you hold, you hold, and then you can drag stuff over. And that's how you add brushes in Clip Studio Paint on Android. Internal storage. Let's go here. I haven't downloaded any brushes from them. So if we go go to G Drive. So on and so forth. And you could do the same thing. Just drag and drop. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're just drag and drop and you should have uh, no problem getting stuff done. All right. So here's another feature of Android if you're not familiar. And you need a little bit more of a... Uh, understanding of why you know having a device like this is good so let's go to this Ooh, so here we go so let's go here okay so let's go okay here we go so this is what we do you hit this you hit play Okay, inch. and then oh, basically you go here, right here, so, and, then said, you and then you come here, and then you can basically, reviewing. let's turn that down because I don't because think you, you know need to hear everything that I have to say. So what's really cool is you can basically draw, right, and you can watch a video, so that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get dark. And you would think that it would tax the processor a lot, and you can shrink that down, you can put it in different places. You can see that, so it is a true working in the background. Yeah, okay. All right, so basically what I'm thinking is, uh, whoops, yeah. where is my pencil? Pencil, mechanical pencil, okay. Yeah, see in Clip Studio Paint, you see a little bit, it runs it pretty good, and this is pretty much the program that I would use as a professional on this particular device you know it just it's good now in terms of tilt this pencil or device or this particular um, 
pencil. Let's see, pencil. Let's go down here. Color jitter ink. Okay. Pen pressure. You can adjust the pen pressure inside of the program. So that's important to note. That's really good. Uh, brush shape, texture, to aliasing, brush shape. Okay. Let's go to ink. Opacity, blending mode, color mixing, so on and so forth. Yeah. So good. Yeah, see it's now you see a little bit different. It all depends, like I said, on the um on the program. Sometimes the programs work with you, some they need to work against you. And Clip Studio Paint just definitely works for you. So here's the pastel. Let's go. Nope, we went to white. Let's go black. Black. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now there is a simple version. If you decide that you don't want, yeah, confirm, save, not now. Let's see if it opens it. Huh. So now we're in the simple version. Let's see if it'll import. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So here we are in the simple version of Clip Studio Paint and blah, 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 you get the idea. Okay, let's go ahead and go all the way down here. Let's go here, whoops. Now I like the simple version of Clip Studio Paint. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, Sometimes, eh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, what I'm seeing is what is known as user error, right? Okay, tolerance refer to all layers. No, yeah, and it just you can see the frustration. So, let's go back. Because I'm used to working in the other program. Um, return to Clip Studio Paint. Here, we're going to go to Switch to Studio Mode. Switch to Studio Mode. Uh, all right. Open Recent. Untitled. There we go. So, like I said, there are so many different. Yeah. I can do this here. Because I want to be able to draw something for you guys and not fail miserably, which is what I've been doing for the past 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I kid, I kid, I kid. But you're like, no, dude, you suck. Okay, so let's go here. Pastel, let's go here, here, ink. You can't adjust the pin pressure on that particular brush. Yeah, so far, this has been a fantastic device to work on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to draw something. Other than what you see, right? These are just doodles. Doodles, doodles, doodles. Okay, pencil, mechanical properties, mechanical pencil. There is a brush, and I probably need to download it. Let's get a little freckles here. Huh. That's interesting. Okay. Hmm. There is a setting inside of Clip Studio Paint. Touch. Reset. Okay. There we go. It's a little bit better. And it reset to white. Why did it do that? There it goes. Okay. What is she doing? Okay. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and start drawing because I need to at least show you the capabilities of the device and not just doodling. All right. So let's get started. We're going to put you on time lapse just because, you know, drawing, drawing, drawing takes a long time. 
So I'll probably narrate over it just to kind of give you a feel of what I'm feeling. And we are going to be using Sketchbook, or not Sketchbook, but Clip Studio Paint today. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. All right, you guys, enjoy the time lapse. Okay, so that is pretty much my quote-unquote review and drawing process using the Samsung Galaxy S6 Lite. Um, so this is the 2022 slash 2023 version that came out, I believe, May around May of 2022. Um, the specs of the machine, 10.4 uh, inches, resolution 1200 by 200, or I'm sorry, 2000 pixels. Um, platform is said it came with Android 12, but it's been upgraded to Android 14. The chipset, uh, I believe, depending on the storage that you get, comes with either the Snapdragon 732 or the 720G. I'm pretty sure mine came with the lower version because it's a 64 gigabyte uh, solid state drive. And as far as the cameras go, it's got an 8 megapixel wide ratio um, camera panorama uh, on the back side, and then it's got a single selfie camera that shoots 5 megapixels at 1080p, 30 frames per second. So that's pretty cool. So both the cameras are HD at 30 frames per second. Um, comes with stereo speakers on both sides of the machine. And as far as the uh, screen itself, it's a TFT LCD liquid crystal uh, screen. And it's got HDR. So overall, the colors are real saturated. It's got a, v a beautiful uh, display. And it did come with like a covering on it, which I thought was interesting, um, you know, for this particular price point. Um, what else? Yeah. Uh, Wi-Fi 802.11, dual band Wi-Fi direct, Bluetooth is 5.0. GPS, NFC, all those, it doesn't have NFC, it doesn't have a radio, but it does have the uh, industry standard USB type C connection, which is really awesome. Pretty much everything's going to that now. So I just wanted to get those specs out of the way. And it does have a SD card slot that you can expand up. And I think I've got a 256 gigabyte, uh, now I do, 256 gigabyte uh, micro SD card in there. So what what makes this good? So overall, the reason why I wanted to do this video is because of the drawing experience. You saw some really little quirks here and there, especially as it applies to user interface, right? The way I draw, the, the tilt of the pen, sometimes a little bit too much tilt caused it to be a little bit wider of a stroke. And of course, that also depended on the program that I was in. Sketchbook Pro is really just kind of a, I call it a hammer. <laughs> it's kind of a a blank, you know, a hammer. It does have different um, feel on different devices, right? I use it on iPad. I use it on Mac OS. I use it on PCs. I use it on Android. So 
you would think that it would be the same across the entire gamut of those devices, but it is not. And on the Android device that I use it on, which is the S6 Lite, the tilt was really sensitive. And if I got a little bit past 90 degrees, then it would start getting into the um, the tilt feature, which had to do with shading and not uh, pinpoint drawing accuracy. I kind of got over that by, um, you know, just changing my, posi my the position of my pencil. Um, speed, I didn't really have any issues speed-wise. Battery life was good. Uh, the brightness and knit was really good. And it did have a feature um, that would auto-dim, depending on where I was in the ambient lighting situation. And it's got all the features that, like, modern telephones and tablets have, to where at a certain point in the evening, it transitions over to a yellower, warmer light spectrum instead of blue, which is damaging for your eyes. Um, this device is just so good at drawing. I it, It's hard for me to convey that, and, and, and I, I know I keep saying it, but... My my um, experience with tablets, you know, I started back in 97, 98, 99 when Wacom was there. But I mean, they had 200 and what, 244 levels of print sensitivity. And then as time progressed, we've gotten up now to where it's like 8,192, which is kind of the standard. And then your your companies like XB Pen, Sense Labs, and Yugi have doubled that now to 16,000 levels. So that's kind of an area of diminishing returns to where... You don't really see the difference in uh, pressure sensitivity um, because it, they've kind of eliminated that whole dynamic of, you know, the step-step process. I mean, back in the old days, even at 256 levels of pressure sensitivity, and then it went up to like 480, and then it was like 8-something, and then it went up to, I don't know, there's huge jumps. Like in like three-year period, they doubled everything. And then that's when you kind of saw the difference in, in the larger brushes. But in terms of pressure sensitivity, it feels just like a pencil. Um, it doesn't have a textured surface, which a lot of people are kind of going towards now. And also what that does is you get a textured surface on the screen and it kind of gets rid of some of the sharpness of the images. Um, you know, Apple has touted, oh, it doesn't diminish color. It doesn't do in the... I'm like, they, they must be doing something different because every screen protector, ever anything that you put on the screen between you and those pixels, it, it'll, it'll, you know, kind of make things a little bit not as crisp. But, um, I didn't notice any, any, you know, real quote unquote massive amount of parallax. I mean, the parallax, the distance between the cursor and the tip of the pen, I mean, they've got, everything's bonded, not everything. A lot of the screens now are bonded, so you're not getting any parallax and everything that has to do with, with, uh, lag will have to do with file size, size of brush, um, and pixel density. So, you know, all those things uh, taken into account, I didn't get hardly any, <laughs> hardly any kind of lag or anything like that. The S Pen is absolutely wonderful. And gosh, it, you know, and, and some of the other devices that I've used, especially like your Microsoft, and even recently, some of the some of the old Intric technology that is showing up now in the in the bargain base uh, tablets, you really understand how bad that was. That that the Intric technology is just so terrible, and especially like 2014, 2015, 2016, when your when your brush is doing this and you're not doing this, there's a problem. And the S Pen doesn't do any of that. It is absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, it's even at the price point, right? If you were to pay 350 bucks for this thing back in 2022, 2023, um, it would still be a bargain because, uh, you know, the, the Android operating system, I, I first got into it, gosh, um, whenever I experienced uh, one of the other tablets, like I went to Best Buy and I, 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 you know, did the tablet and had it in front of me. And I was like, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> then as they progressed, as Android has gotten better and better, you know, I, I really enjoy it. The ease that it that it transfer files and you're able to download stuff and access files, it acts more like a desktop. Now, I did see recently, this is really cool. I didn't even know it could do this. There is a setting to where you can have a desktop on your Android tablet. So that's really cool. So I'm going to try that out and see how that, uh, you know, see how that gels. But overall, after I've had this device over a year, and I find myself continually going back to it. It's small enough to transport. It's powerful enough. The battery life is good. The drawing experience is like a 9, 10 out of 10. 
And overall, um, I don't have any complaints about it. It is a wonderful machine at that price point. You know, now you could probably pick one up brand new for less than $200. And at less than $200, there's nothing. There is nothing in the marketplace that touches this thing. I mean, you could go out and spend $400, $500, $600 on an iPad Pro or even just a regular iPad Air. And, you know, granted, those things are really high uh, value versus return. um, But you're going to spend a lot of money up front. This device is great for students. It's a great budget-minded tablet that is not really budget. How do I put it? It it doesn't skimp on any features. So you're getting an extremely robust device that will last you, you know, three, four, five, six years. And, you know, whenever you decide to upgrade, then you can uh, be rest assured that Samsung is going to take care of you uh, in terms of quality, longevity, upgradability, I mean, all those things. Um, I'm a, you know, I I own two Samsung TV, three Samsung TVs, and they've always been really good to me. And uh, my son uses a Samsung phone, which, albeit, is one of the new flip phones. And we've had to replace the screen a couple times um, because it is new technology. Samsung is constantly pushing the envelope with technology. I mean, they do things first. They do things well. And even they fall on their face. And whenever they fall on their face, they get up, they brush themselves off, and they keep moving forward. So if you're in the in the market for really great drawing experience, that's that's what we do here, right? Great drawing experiences. Um, that's what we're looking for. Then definitely consider the Samsung S6, Galaxy S6 Lite. Now, I think they've got a new one that came out in 2024. And I think it's the S7 Lite. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is. Um, and I haven't been on their website recently. What you saw me do uh, on their website was, I believe, a year ago. So um, they've changed things a little bit, I believe. But overall, you could probably pick one up these uh, one of these up on uh, their website, refurbished or even old stock. You know, for probably less than two hundred dollars. But uh, at that price point, you could buy like two for the price of an iPad. So anyway, thank you guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed the review and the drawing. And I'm gonna put up a couple drawings that I did on the S6 Lite um, through the duration of my tenure of owning it so far, and uh, hopefully you enjoy and come back for more. We'll see you next time, guys. All right, bye.